erasing their personalities until all that's left is the shell of their bodies. 1,300 Australians are diagnosed with Alzheimer's every week, making it more common than cancer or even heart disease. And for those who get the news, it's as good as a death sentence. Until now. I've visited a revolutionary clinic that's offering real hope to sufferers and their families. The doctors there believe Alzheimer's disease can be reversed, and they have the results to prove it. Little stick. With this one simple injection, 63-year-old Charlie Giles is about to be reborn. All right, I'm going to tilt the table down, OK? He'll have to endure a disconcerting five minutes with his head pointed at the floor. Charlie, you OK? Yeah. OK. But okay. it's worth it. Because this unconventional procedure is changing the lives of Alzheimer's patients. And what city are you in? But Charlie, a transformation from this I don't know. Okay. to this. I'm back. You know, I can do things and talk to them and, and not mope around. I, it's, it's great. <laughs> it's like a miracle is what it is. You have 30 seconds left. And it's all thanks to one pioneering doctor, Ed Tobinick, who just wouldn't listen to the skeptics. Is it a cure? It has a marvelous, immediate and prolonged effect. As it feels, it really, truly does feel like a miracle. This is the tiny vial of medicine that's changing the lives of some dementia sufferers. It's called perispinal etanocept, an anti-inflammatory drug that was designed to treat rheumatoid arthritis. Now, it targets a protein called TNF. We all have it, but it's 25 times higher in patients with Alzheimer's. Dr. Tobinick discovered that this, just a few mils of it, can shrink excessive levels of that protein in the brain. And his patients say it's like a fog clearing from their mind. But as you'll see, hundreds of thousands of Australian sufferers are so far being denied this incredible mind-restoring treatment. Pat, if Richard could have continued on with the injections, do you think you'd still have him today? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Instead of a comfortable retirement, for the past two years, Charlie Giles has been slipping into twilight. How do you describe what's happening in your mind? What's happening to you now? Uh, it's just blank. It's uh, when you want to, if you want to uh, say something, you can't. It's scary. You know. Alzheimer's is stealing his ability to communicate, and it's simply heartbreaking for his wife, Cheryl, to watch. It's hard, isn't it, Cheryl? Yeah, it's hard. Um, just watching him struggle sometimes frustrates him sometimes when he's trying hard to say the thing, and it just isn't there. For 20 years, Charlie was a highly skilled machinist in a laboratory that made space telescopes. But even recalling that career now is almost impossible. What was your profession? What did you used to do? A machinist. I, I, I made uh, things to go in... Uh, um, <laughs> I forget what I made. <laughs> That's your baby girl. Who is she? Okay. And instead of his daughters and grandchildren, he now sees strangers. Granddaughter. I know. <laughs> I can't say. Ashley. Ashley in. So we ought to be there in a couple minutes. How are you feeling? Good. Charlie's okay. tried most of the mainstream dementia drugs, but none have helped. This is our turn in. So today, Charlie and Cheryl are visiting Dr. Tobinick's Institute of Neurological Research in California. 
Hi, Sarah. Hello. Nice to see you. You too. Hi, Charlie. Nice Hello. to see you. I'm going to give you a few words to repeat. First, time. Charlie is given a memory a test commonly used to determine levels of dementia. And can you tell me who is the U.S. president? No. Okay. And I want you to tell me as many words that start with the letter P in one minute. Plate. Mm. I don't know. It all confirms what Cheryl knows deep in her heart, that Charlie is rapidly deteriorating. And what is the current year? Uh. His kind of dementia is called primary progressive aphasia, which has scrambled his mind. Words are hard it's to find, let alone use in conversation. Ten, ten, I think. Dr. Tobinick's injection is Charlie and Cheryl's last hope. So we're going to do the injection now. Okay. We're ready. Okay. We're ready to do it. All right. You ready, Charlie? Yeah. Okay. Using a drug approved for arthritis, but never before for Alzheimer's, is raising a lot of eyebrows in the medical and pharmaceutical community. Here's how the procedure works. A little stick. Dr. Tobinick injects the medicine straight into the back of the neck, penetrating the rich blood system surrounding the spine, but not the spinal cord itself. All right, I'm gonna tilt the table down, okay? Once it's in, the patient is tilted upside down, head first, to let the drug drain through those blood vessels, traveling directly into the fluid around the brain. The medicine temporarily kills that excessive protein and reduces inflammation. The patients have a greater clarity of thought. Um, they have improved attention. Um, they have the improved ability to concentrate. It, it really is exactly like coming out of fog. I'm going to turn back over, okay? Minutes after his injection, Charlie sits upright and immediately he feels the change. What do you feel is different? I don't know. It's clearer or something. something. On successful patients, the drug appears to work quickly. All right, Charlie, you're back Shortly now. after the injection, Dr. Tobinick again quizzes Charlie. Uh, Charlie, who, who is the president of the United States? <laughs> Obama. Yes, very good. The full effects will take time, but the fog is certainly lifting. The next day, we see even more changes in Charlie. How do you think it went yesterday? It went good. It went good, but I want more. <laughs> Remember, this was Charlie's memory before. What was your profession? What did you used to do? I, I uh, made uh, things to go in, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, forget what I made. <laughs> what was your job? I worked at the uh, Livermore lab and I uh, uh, built things and I did uh, work on the uh, Hubble and uh, uh, the the Hubble telescope. Yeah, for fixing it. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> A long time ago. <laughs> Cheryl, how remarkable is this? This flow of conversations, just wonderful. I know. I've been smiling all morning at it. Every time he would open his mouth and talk to, about anything to me. Do you feel like you've got the old Charlie back? Yes. A lot happened yesterday, and I'm looking forward to even more. Fast forward another month and three injections later and have a listen to Charlie. It's like a miracle is what it is. It's great to be able to talk. Mm. <laughs> a tree, a house. Dr. Tobinick says yeah, Charlie's yeah. cognitive skills have improved 30%. A woman and a man having a picnic. And then we'll sit you back up. An improvement the clinic claims is common for its hundred or so Alzheimer's patients. Oh, you're doing just great. But here at home, authorities don't recognize those amazing results, and that's a tragedy for Australian sufferers. He didn't know his children. Some of his relatives would come to visit him, 
and he'd talk to them and they'd talk to him and then they'd leave and then he'd go to me and say, they were nice people, who were they? Can you tell me the names of your children? Um... As Pat Lay watched her husband Richard rapidly descend into advanced Alzheimer's, her Melbourne doctors offered no hope. You know, there's three of them, there was one boy and two girls. But Pat's a determined lady, and when she heard of Dr Tobinick's treatment, the couple set out for LA, hoping for a miracle. Well, you get desperate. <laughs> and, um, I mean, he'd really been a good husband to me. I'll be right in a minute. This keeps happening all the time. How are you feeling, Richard? Pretty good. Richard became the clinic's first Australian patient. And after just one injection, the change was overwhelming. I still can't speak. Instantly, I had my husband back. It was as quick as that. And it was a great feeling. I cried my eyes out. I can't tell you what. But I feel within myself that I'm a different person. He just kept saying, I feel terrific. <laughs> Whereas before, I don't think he could even say the word terrific. In those days following, how did you see a change in Richard? Well, I got up one night to go to the toilet. <laughs> and when I came out, Richard was standing at the door. And I said, oh, did you want to go in? And he started singing to me. <laughs> I could have danced all night and he took my arms and then we started dancing in the lounge room. This is like two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so it was just wonderful. <laughs> but patients must have continuing regular injections and Pat and Richard couldn't afford to stay in LA. Back home, he went downhill fast and died months later following hip surgery. I mean, if more people could have it, if Australians could receive this injection, what difference do you think it would make? It would give them back their partner to what it was before it all started. It's, um, it would give them back what they wanted. <laughs> I'm just going to lower you down a little bit more, OK? OK. And there's hope that will happen. How are you feeling, Pete? I'm feeling just fine. Researchers at Queensland's Griffith University hope to begin the first Australian trials on paraspinal etanercept early next year. You're OK? Mm hmm Good. What do you think about coming back for the next treatment? That'll be in two Yeah. Weeks. But Charlie Giles doesn't need any more proof. We're coming back. <laughs> He's come alive. And he and Cheryl are again living every day more husband and wife the nurse and on. patient. Yeah, it'll be great to see her. And... You might have trouble shutting him up now. Yep, but I'll tell you what, I'll go a lot of years without saying that. <laughs> I won't tell him to shut up. <laughs> you can talk as much as you want, Charlie. That's it. Yeah. You're on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't kiss you with a hat on, darling. Mm. <laughs> Mine or yours. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh.